Seeing people review it. <laughs> this is adorable. Holy cow. <laughs> it's hilarious. Look how tiny this thing is. Hey everyone, it's Darby from Blue Television Games, and today I've got some mail. I believe it is the NES Classic and also something else really cool I bought. So I'm gonna open it up and do an unboxing today. Got my steak knife, let's get started. Awesome, it's so much smaller than I imagined. I've seen so many videos on this. I was one of the few people lucky enough to buy this online. I bought it on Best Buy in the middle of the night. As soon as it went live, probably, I don't know. I just kept getting up every hour. But here is the little guy, the NES Classic Edition. I got it, I'm so excited. It actually said it was delivered to me Saturday, which it wasn't. I thought it got lost in the mail, but here it is, the NES Classic. I hope you guys can see it. I have no idea what kind of focus I got going on this thing. We'll go ahead and get this opened up, but first, just to give you guys an idea of how small this thing is, here's one of my old school NESs. And here's the box of the NES Classic. Once we get it out, we'll do another comparison. All right, the box is super cool. It looks really awesome. Here goes nothing. Ooh, it comes with a poster of some sort. This looks awesome. I'm assuming it's a poster, maybe. I don't know its directions. Awesome. Nintendo Entertainment System, now you're playing with power since 1985. And there she is. There is the poster. And we'll get a shot of this as well. In case this uh, iPhone's not picking up the quality as well as it should. I have no way to monitor it at the moment. Monitor it. Holy cow, this thing is so much smaller than I imagined it ever would be. I mean, I've seen pictures. I've seen people review it. <laughs> this is adorable. Holy cow. <laughs> it's hilarious. Look how tiny this thing is. Oh my god, let me grab the original again. Original? NES Classic. Holy cow, that thing is tiny. It's about the size of a box you would get a Big Mac in, but maybe a little smaller. Holy cow, that's tiny. Okay, also in the box we have NES controller. Ooh, and it feels, I mean, this feels pretty close to the original. As far as I can tell, it feels really nice, actually. That is awesome. It's gotta be close to the specs of the original. Definitely feels great. Freakishly excited, as you can see, I am frantically trying to put together. One of the things I wanted to test, I heard that the cables are really short on this, and they are not kidding. I mean, look at that. You gotta have this thing sitting on your lap to play it. Um, that's definitely a problem. You're gonna have to have an extender of some sort, because I mean, that is just ridiculous. I know Hyperkin makes a uh, adapter where you can actually use an actual NES controller, but I gotta say, this brand new one, I mean, this feels like what I imagine an NES controller should. All the ones I have are pretty old and they feel pretty good, but this feels like a brand new NES controller. So I wish the cable was longer. Only bad critique so far. This is just on the actual hardware itself. This is powered by USB, so it does come with a USB adapter, which is very handy if you don't have any extra lying around. Ooh, this is like Christmas, I'm so excited. I really thought that this wasn't gonna come in. It said delivered and I thought it got stolen or lost. USPS just screwed up a little, I guess. Okay, it comes with an HDMI cable. It is decent length. I mean, as short as the system is, you're gonna have to run this to your TV, set this on your freaking lap, and play some NES. I mean, it's really disappointing how uh, small they made the controller cable itself. I'm assuming just to fit it all in this tiny box. I don't know. And lastly, we have the actual power cord here. You'll take this little sucker here. I guess the cool thing is, is you could power it, you know, if you have a computer or something nearby, you could power it closer to you and then run the HDMI cable out. So we would plug this little puppy in here, like so. And then we'd pop the HDMI in here. And then we have the little sucker hooked up. That's, that's how it look all hooked up. Very cool. All right, and maybe we'll take a quick look at a game here at the end too. But we do have another surprise here that I got. What could it be? It's actually damaged, so... Oh, wow, this is even cooler than I imagined. Holy cow. Playing with Power NES Classics book. This is a tip book for old NES games, which, I mean, you can get on Google and look up anything you need to know, but a collector's item. I mean, this is a hardback book. It looks like an NES cartridge. This is very cool. All right, we found a corner where I didn't have to bust it open. And it comes with this little handy thing in the back that kind of shows you what's up. And... It comes with this really cool sleeve. It's actually textured right here. 
You can hear that. That's textured. And on the back it says, do not store in extreme temperatures. Do not immerse in water. Do not clean with benzene, thinner alcohol, or other such solvents. And it says copyright 2016. That's really cool. The back of the book actually has an NES controller as does the front. And uh, let's see the quality inside. Wow, it's got detailed screenshots. Um, like for instance, here's a picture from World 8 inside that's showing you a really cool drawing of Mario fighting Bowser. Uh, but then it has all these little tips. Collect the power up with ease. So here's World 7 airship. Hit the bolt lift from underneath to make it move left. Then use it to give yourself a boost up to the power up. Skip those nutty bolt lifts. You can make it from platform to platform without using bolt lifts if you use the B jump button. So it has little tips for players that are new at the game or maybe things you just never thought of. That's just Mario 3 there, but it looks like it's got tons of games. Yeah, as far as I can tell, it looks like it covers pretty much all the games on the NES Classic. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. There's a lot here. I mean, there's just page after page. It's separated by color guide. It's really cool. Definitely a great thing to go along with the NES Classic. Uh, we will definitely pop this baby in, start her up, and capture some gameplay at the end of this, and we'll be doing a ton of videos on the NES Classic. I know it's a popular item. But thank you for watching the unboxing portion. Let's go ahead and check out the NES Classic. All right, so I just plugged in my NES Classic. I got it pulled up on the TV and we got to select our language. So we're going to pick English and we're hit OK. Oh, wow. And it gets you right into the games. This looks so cool. Looks great on the TV. It does display in 720p at 60 frames per second, which is really awesome. And we have tons of games here to choose from. We're just going to play a short little bit of a game here. Just to give you guys a little test here, I know you guys, a lot of you have checked this out already, but I'm really excited to do this. These are all so fun. Let's start up Metroid. All right, and I do have a Retron 5, which is a system that plays old cartridges. I said at some point, maybe we'll do a compare and contrast against the two systems. But so far, everything seems to run real quick and smooth. We'll see if there's any input lag here. Awesome, this is so cool. I love playing off of this little tiny NES. All right, so as far as I can tell, the control feels really solid. The controller itself feels great. When I hit jump, it seems to jump. It's been a while since I played Metroid, so I gotta keep that in mind. All right. There we go. We got our first power up, so we can spin into a little ball now and get under this. Get to some new areas eventually. Nice. Okay, yeah, this definitely is sweet. I'm very excited. I'm very lucky to have actually gotten a copy of the NES Classic because it sold out very quickly. All right, so we have just played a little bit of Metroid. Now, as far as I know, there's no way to do a quick reset. You actually have to hit reset on the console, which I feel like is kind of a weird, definitely a weird thing. I'm hitting every button at once. It's not working, so I'm going to hit reset on the console now. When you hit reset, you get an option to save your game. Let's see how that works. We hit down, we can save one of four save states. So we'll put it in data one and we'll go up and let's play some Pac-Man real quick. So I guess they made the controller short, assuming you keep the system close to you, maybe? I don't know. Awesome, Pac-Man. All right, so we're doing pretty good here. Got a couple ghosts. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah, this is very awesome, especially if you don't have a way to play retro games. A lot of people use emulators, which is basically what this system is, is an emulator, but um, yeah, you know. If you don't have a good option to play old classic games and you can get a copy of the NES Classic, that would be definitely awesome. I can't tell if there's lag input on this game in particular or if you just have to hit the direction a little bit early. That does feel a little bit off. Almost got eaten by the ghost. Doing pretty good. Let's see if we could beat level one real quick. And I'm curious about the save states. If it's four per game, I can't remember if it's just four altogether. I imagine it's four per per game. That would make more sense. Eat you. Go down here. Collect those pellets, though. I'm not gonna worry about any of the fruit right now. Ooh, we just kicked some butt on Pac-Man. All right, we're gonna hit reset on the system. And hit down. Yep, four separate saves per game. That's awesome. So we can pick up Pac-Man right where we left off. 
Very, very cool, and maybe we'll just go ahead and play one more quick game, just for the heck of it. Let's see here. Maybe some Donkey Kong? One player, one player game A, let's start it up. As you can see, the quality does look great in HD. Upscaling works great on the system, it just looks great. Alright, going up the ladder. Let's see if we can beat level one of Donkey Kong. It's a pretty easy level, I think we can handle this. Controls definitely feel solid on this, so I think Pac-Man just is a little bit off itself, just just how the original game was. Because yeah, I jumped over that barrel with ease. Climb up the ladders feels super solid. And there we go. We got up to the top, saved Pauline. Alright, hit and reset. Alright, so super cool. Let's go ahead and save our data just for the heck of it. Awesome. So up here we have display. We can do 4x3, we can do pixel perfect, or we can put a CRT filter on. Uh, that way it can look like an old school television. Pixel perfect, uh, I don't know what that'll look like. Let's check it out real quick. We'll go back to Donkey Kong. So it looks, uh, actually it looks a little worse I think, but maybe this is just everything's perfect as far as the pixels were originally meant to be, I don't know. Alright, let's hit reset here. So I definitely think the uh, the default display 4x3 definitely looks the best. Options, we have demo, auto shutdown, screen burn and reduction, all that's on. I'm leaving that alone. Language we already know, legal notices, we don't care about. Manuals, view the original game manuals and other information on your smart device. That's pretty cool. So you can just hold your phone up there, scan it and view the manual. Definitely a cool option. Maybe we'll get some footage of that at some point as well. All right, guys, let me know what you think of the NES Classic below. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like videos like this, we do it all the time. Feel free to share the videos as it helps the channel out a bunch. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you around.